Welcome to a Locked On Podcast Network Civil War. On today's episode of the Locked On Kings Podcast, we are addressing a Locked On NBA National show that discussed the Sacramento Kings as the 10th best team in the Western Conference and DeMontis Sabonis not being a top 20 player. Kings fans, assemble! You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all off-season long. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here of the Locked on Kings podcast. I'm a Sacramento sports anchor and reporter for ABC 10 News. And of course, I wear my love of the Sacramento Kings on my sleeve. I couldn't do this job hosting a daily podcast for the Kings if I wasn't as in love and obsessed with this organization as I am. I was raised that way, right? Born and raised in the Sacramento area. The Kings are my team. So yes, I absolutely am a homer. Yes, I have my biases and I wear them proudly. I also think I do a pretty good job at understanding and recognizing when it's the purple glasses on and when it's, okay, no, this is legitimate and people outside of Sacramento just aren't paying attention let me inform them a little bit, right? Now, before we start breaking down the things that were said about the Kings and DeMontis Sabonis on this Locked On NBA National Show, I want to preface this by saying the Locked On NBA Show, it's daily NBA, national NBA coverage. There's different hosts every single day. It's fantastic for you. In fact, you'll see, if you're watching on YouTube, every single time uh, you, you see an episode on YouTube, you'll see a watch next at the bottom, and it's locked on NBA. It's a fantastic show. The two hosts that we're going to be addressing today that had the things they had to say about the Sacramento Kings, Nick and Pat, are excellent hosts, right? Pat, now the former host of the Locked On Bulls podcast. Nick, the host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast. They do an excellent job. They have a really solid NBA knowledge. The reason why I'm addressing this is one, I fundamentally disagree with a lot of what they say about the Sacramento Kings. And two, I feel a lot of this is regurgitated stuff that we hear on ESPN or we read on SportsCenter or we see on social media when being discussed about the Sacramento Kings because it's their easy talking points that are regurgis, uh, regurgitated and cycled around the NBA to discredit or undermine simply what the Sacramento Kings do. I'm not saying that there can't be doubts or concerns about the Kings, but as long as those doubts and concerns are rooted in what's actually happening and what's actually happened versus what we believe to know about a team and what some numbers say about a team without actually watching them play, right? So that's going to be kind of a major theme of this podcast today, but do not Go hating on Nick and Pat. They're great guys. I addressed them earlier. I let them know, hey, I'm I'm going to be responding to you guys here on this podcast. Again, I fundamentally disagree with a lot of what they say. It's all in good fun. There's nothing malicious that they say about the Sacramento Kings or anything like that. And check out our Locked On NBA shows uh, because they are fantastic. But all right, let's start with Nick and Pat discussing whether or not the Sacramento Kings are the 10th best team in the Western Conference. They got this number off of FanDuel. Apparently, FanDuel odds to, to win the West. The Sacramento Kings are 10th, which I think is way too low. But Nick and Pat discuss that. Are the Kings the 10th best team in the West? Should they be 10th in the West? Because the odds say that they should be that team. I don't know if they're the 10th best team in the West, but I think it's close enough that 10 is not a bad spot to put them. And I know mm. that sounds crazy adding in a guy like DeMar DeRozan, right? But what was the Kings problem last year? And did they address that? The Kings never had an issue being an offensive juggernaut. They had a 116 offensive rating, 116.7, I believe. They were able to go out there and score points versus the best of the best teams in the NBA, no matter what your defense was. The problem the Sacramento Kings had was they couldn't stop me and Nick. Sort of correct. Sort of correct. Sacramento took a significant step 
back offensively last season, going from the best offensive rating in the league to middle of the pack. And yes, the Kings' primary strength was still scoring, but with their emphasis on the defensive end of the floor, which drastically improved from near the bottom of the league to around the center of the league as well, the Sacramento Kings essentially on both sides of the ball became an average team. I understand where Pat is coming from. I understand this understanding or this belief in the Sacramento Kings. And you look at the numbers and you see a 116 offensive rating. You're like, that's really good. This Kings team is a really good scoring team. They can score against anybody, which is true. However, they did not score at the level that we know they are capable of scoring. And that was before DeMar DeRozan was added. And defensively, they did improve. They had times where they struggled defensively, especially at the start of the year. But the second half of the year are really you should say the final third of the year defensively, the Sacramento Kings really started to turn it on. (laughs) Like defensively, this team is just, there's so much in flux that you kind of feel comfortable putting them at that 10 spot. Now, am I willing to sit here and have the argument with you that maybe they could be nine because of the Phoenix Suns? Maybe they could be nine because we don't know what the Lakers are. Maybe they could be a nine or eight, right? Somewhere in that range. But even so, you're not sitting here saying that the Kings are going to be one of those top teams in the league. You mentioned the Oklahoma City Thunder who had a phenomenal record. Okay, we're not taught eight and nine is not the top teams in the league. Maybe they can be ninth. Maybe they can be in the same spot that they were last season before they replaced Harrison Barnes with DeMar DeRozan and, and kept Malik Monk. Maybe they could be eighth, which is only one spot better. And then he starts bringing up OKC. Yeah, those are the top teams in the Western Conference. They are, and as I've said here on Locked on Kings many, many times, they are the absolute upper echelon, absolute upper echelon of the NBA, right? Or at least in the Western Conference. Those are the top teams. Sacramento is not on their level. But why are we talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder when talking about maybe the Kings could be ninth or eighth? No, the the conversation should be maybe the Kings can be fourth or fifth. Like, I don't think anybody's expecting Sacramento to finish top three like they were able to last season. I think they're capable of doing it, but nobody should be expecting that or predicting that. But discussing maybe they might be ninth or eighth? Come on, that is a criminal, criminal uh, undersell or underestimate uh, underestimation of how good the Sacramento Kings team will be. I think I think here's my thing, right? Adding DeMar DeRozan doesn't change that. You had a 116.1 defensive rating last season. You're adding a guy in who last season averaged a 118 defensive rating with the Chicago Bulls. There wasn't a lot of defense there. And it's not because DeMar can't play defense. It is a... I'm focused on the offensive end, so I'm giving more to the offensive end. I'm not giving nearly as much to the defensive end. That's not going to help the Sacramento Kings move up the bracket. I'm okay with everything Pat said there. He's right. The addition of DeMar DeRozan is not going to improve the Sacramento Kings defensively. And what we've talked about a lot here on Locked on Kings this offseason is what does defensive improvement or even defensive consistency from the end of last season. What does that look like when the Kings themselves are talking about how the way the games were officiated and allowing more physicality is what led to Sacramento's improvement on the defensive end? The defense is still a question mark. It's absolutely in flux. The addition of DeMar DeRozan is not going to improve the Kings' defense, but it's going to so drastically improve the offense and get the offense back to even beyond the level that it was two years ago, in my opinion, that even if the defense is bad, I don't think it'll hold this team back as much as these guys are expecting it to when talking about the Kings finishing 8th, ninth, or 10th in the West. They they were had a 116 offensive rating, which sounds really good, but it was 14th in, in the NBA. Yeah. So I think that it, DeMar DeRozan does help them. The thing that I've been doing with the Kings this offseason is I think that they got more talented. I don't know that they got better. But to put them at the 10th seed, I don't know that they're the 10th seed with, with that amount of talent. I need a, a description. You're more talented, but not better. Make it make sense. So you're essentially saying that DeMar DeRozan is a more talented, upgraded player from Harrison Barnes, but he's not going to be, the Sacramento Kings aren't going to be as good of a team because DeMar DeRozan is not going to fit with the Sacramento Kings as well as Harrison Barnes did. DeMar DeRozan, who averages 20 points per game and is a go-to isolation scorer who can fit with multiple teams because of the way that he plays is not going to make the Sacramento Kings better when he's replacing a guy that if he wasn't scoring, he wasn't doing anything and no disrespect to Harrison Barnes too. And I know HB is a better defender than DeMar DeRozan is, 
and I'm not trying to be, this is not a crap on Harrison Barnes situation here. I know HB is a better defender than DeMar DeRozan is, but we got to stop talking about it like the gap is that massive because Harrison Barnes over the last couple of seasons has not played good defense for Sacramento. So I don't understand at all this concept of the Sacramento Kings are more talented, but not better. They're significantly more talented, and the addition of DeMar DeRozan plus being able to bring back some of these guys is 100% going to make the Sacramento Kings a better basketball team. If you're betting against the Kings, you're betting on the West in general being better so that the Sacramento, uh, the Kings' improvement with the addition of DeMar DeRozan wasn't enough. That I'll listen to, but suggesting that adding a talent like DeMar and him not making your team any better than what they were, that's that's silly to me, Nick. But I do think that the, like, the Grizzlies are going to pass them up. The Kings were ninth last year. The Grizzlies are going to pass them up. I think the Warriors could pass them up. We'll see with a healthy Draymond or healthy and non-suspended Draymond this season. Like that team is is primed to like pass them up. I think there's a good chance the Rockets could pass them up this season too. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? You add DeMar DeRozan and you're going to get passed up by a Houston Rockets team with Alperin Shangoon? You're going to get passed up by a Golden State Warriors team that just lost Klay Thompson and is only a year older? If Steph Curry goes down, that team is the worst team in the league or one of the worst teams in the league. And Draymond Green not being suspended. Good freaking luck with that. I can't wait till he punches, punches the next guy or puts somebody else in a headlock. The, the Memphis Grizzlies, okay, if John Morant can stay on the floor and that team can stay healthy, yes, I expect the Memphis Grizzlies to insert themselves back into the conversation. But taking these three teams and just suggesting they're going to be better than the Sacramento Kings, when the Kings improve, why? Like, how are we looking at this offseason and seeing a DeMar DeRozan addition and the return of Malik Monk, which is a major question mark for this Kings team, and everybody pretty much around the league expected Malik Monk to be gone. The Kings extend their head coach, which is a big deal here in Sacramento because that hasn't happened for a while. They get Malik Monk to re-sign and take less money to stay here, and they add a future Hall of Famer and one of the best isolation scorers in the league, but they're going to get passed up by Houston, Golden State, and Memphis? Nick. Nick. Got plenty more to respond to here on the Locked On Kings podcast. These guys then start talking about Tomato Savonis. And you know how defensive I get about Domas. We'll get into that in just a second. But like I said at the top of the show, today's episode of Locked On Kings is brought to you by FanDuel. I've talked a lot about FanDuel over the years, and FanDuel is being discussed in this episode too, with them having the Sacramento Kings with the 10th best odds at finishing the West. I'm just or winning the West, I should say. I'm just saying you put a few bucks on that. If it hits, that's a that's a pretty nice payday. It would be a surprise, but there are certainly teams that are ahead of the Kings in odds that do not belong to be there. I'll just say that. But right now, FanDuel has something different for you. Through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet five dollars and get a three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket with YouTube and YouTube TV with a YouTube TV base plan. You'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. It's a great opportunity for you. NFL Sunday ticket is phenomenal if you call yourself a football fan. And on top of that, you're not paying for this free week free, uh, free trial. You can win your bet. You made money on that bet with that $5 wager that you made, and you get that uh, that deal on top of it. It's just one of the many reasons to go and visit FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. All right, gloves are coming off for this segment. Nick and Pat decided to talk about DeMontis Sabonis not being a top 20 player in the NBA. Let's see why they're wrong. Hoops Hype had a top 25 list and did not have players like Kyrie, Harden, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Bam Adebayo, and others. They did have... Two of the Kings that we're talking about, Demonis Sabonis at 20, Lillard at 21, Zion at 22, Paolo at 23, De'Aaron Fox at 24, Pascal Siakam at 25. Mike Hoops Hype got that right, by the way. Fox and Sabonis absolutely deserve to be there. Question is, is Demonis Sabonis really a top 20 player in the NBA? Yes. Kyrie, Harden, Jimmy, DeRozan, Kawhi, Paul George, Bam Adebayo, Jamal Murray, Trey all Young. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's do None of them can do what Sabonis does and are putting up the numbers that Sabonis does. So those players are better than Sabonis? Let's let's do the exercise again. Go go through it. All right, we'll start we're, with we're, Kyrie because you will you will buzz her very quickly. I mean, what we're going I mean, well, you want you want me to start with worse players? 
Well, I'm just saying, no, start with the, the list you gave. Okay, Kyrie. You, I just said don't start with Kyrie. No, he's not better <laughs> than Kyrie. You said start with the list that I gave. I, was... I don't have actually a, a massive problem with that. Kyrie was just a part of that amazing Dallas Mavericks run uh, that they went on. I think Kyrie is a phenomenal player. So I think Kyrie deserves to be on that top 25 list. I don't know who I would take out, but it wouldn't be DeMontis Sabonis. I, I, okay, no, Jalen Williams Kyrie. of the Thunder. No. Or, yes, he is better than Jalen. He's better. Yeah, yeah. DeMontis Sabonis is better. Larry Marketing. Yes. Yeah, he's better. Uh, Rudy Gobert. Yes. Rudy Gobert versus Demonis Sabonis. Give me, give me Demonis Sabonis. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Thank God. Why is Nick hesitating? Why is Nick hesitating? If you take Rudy Gobert out of the paint period, he is useless. Literally to the point that you can't play him in playoff games because teams would just get him out of the paint. Protecting the rim, he's unbelievable. Absolutely defensive player of the year. Fantastic rebounder. Good screener as well. Rudy Gobert can't hold a candle to the things that DeMontis Sabonis can do with the exception of Rudy Gobert is a better defender. That's it. Now, he's a significantly better defender. I'll give him that 100%. He's a significantly de better, better defender. Sabonis out-rebounds him. Sabonis is a, a million times better passer. And Sabonis can actually score the basketball outside of two feet. Carl Anthony Towns. Give me DeMontis Sabonis. Okay. Good job, Pat. Okay. Scotty Barnes. Give me DeMontis Sabonis. With you on that. I Trey Young. I, I can't figure out what's going on with Scotty Barnes up there sometimes. <laughs> uh ooh, yeah. This is this is hard because that he, one's a tough one. Because why? Because because I, I think I think that's the range. And because of that, I think that's why you can make a case for him. Trey Young is about Trey Young. I, 26 I, I, points, 11 assists last year. But but I think that the thing is too, right? Like, could we do we think we couldn't see Sabonis do more on the team that he's on? No, you know I, I mean? think like he's that, doing what he can do. <laughs> you think you think this is all he's got? If there if there's no Malik Monk, if there's no De'Aaron Fox, you don't. Think everybody's got think everybody's got got those. I think I think that I think he's doing what he can do here. Okay, a couple things to talk about here. Number one, I actually kind of agree with Nick. I don't know how much more the Kings and how much more Demonte Sabonis should be expected to do more, right? He, the Kings would like him to score more for sure. Maybe shoot more, but with the addition of DeMar DeRozan plus De'Aaron Fox still expected to take another step offensively. If he wants to become a super max player, DeMontis Sabon is damn near. I mean, he, I mean, he led the league in triple doubles, right? Led the league in rebounding, led the league in double doubles. Like what, what more can anybody ask of DeMontis Sabonis other than like, okay, prove it in the playoffs, which you know, I, how it, many issues I have with that, but, I get it. I get that question being asked. Now, the Trey Young thing, this this just makes me think about like the Jaden Ivey and Keegan Murray conversation because Jaden Ivey's the, sec the sexy, flashy, exciting, athletic, does these highlight play moments, and now Keegan Murray's just kind of boring because he does the same thing every single night. Trey Young, oh my God, look at the great threes he pulls up from. Look at those flashy assists. Amazing. Those numbers are fantastic. They're excellent. Whoop de doo. And yes, Trey Young, as a point guard, averaged more assists than DeMontis Sabonis did a game. No doubt, he's supposed to as a point guard. The Hawks are not a good basketball team. They haven't been for a while. They had one good year, and that was it. DeMontis Sabonis, a significantly more wi impactful winning player for the Sacramento Kings. Plus, he can pass the ball to a similar level to Trey Young. He can't shoot at the same level of Trey Young, but he can still score at a halfway decent let rate. Not the 26 or whatever points per game that Trey Young is putting up. So if you want to get it simply to scoring, I get that. Trey Young can't even come close to rebounding the basketball as well as Sabonis does. And he shouldn't be expected to because, again, he's a point guard and Sabonis is a center. But people who say, oh, Trey Young is absolutely a better player than DeMontis Sabonis is, that's because you're letting yourself be fooled by the flash and flare and the threes and the excitement and not actually watching the consistency of what Sabonis does on a winning basketball team that influences winning is at the center of what the Sacramento Kings do. If you want to talk about playoffs, okay, that's another conversation. And I do believe when the Sacramento Kings do get back to the postseason that DeMontis Sabonis will play significantly better than he has at any point and finally shut those people up. But I don't think it should be a question right now who's a better player. Sabonis is absolutely better than Trey Young. I think there's more in the tank, but okay. I, I hear you. When have we, okay, so we've seen him before. Last year, he averaged 20 points, about 14 rebounds, eight assists, half of them are handoffs. Um, 2014 and eight. okay, Nick, don't do that. Don't do that. Half of them are handoffs. Okay, so now a handoff just doesn't count as an assist anymore. 
when that is a set, a clear offensive set that you can you can run. Now handing it off to a player and essentially setting a screen while assisting, that doesn't count now to you? Oh, don't be don't be gatekeeping assists, Nick. DHOs are a legitimate play that many teams wish they could run as well and effectively as the Sacramento Kings do because they have a guy in DeMontis Sabonis who is elite at it. Don't be don't be gatekeeping what assists are now and how DHOs don't count as the same assists to Trey Young's flashy, stupid passes. This one, I'll be furious with you. Bam out of bio. Bam adds more of a defensive element. And I think that... And that's it. That because of that, I'd still go Bam because I think Bam can give you the points. That's the, right. The, the one thing that Sabonis adds that Bam doesn't have, well, first off, a jump shot. But the one thing that Bam has He's that Sabonis there. or Sabonis has that Bam doesn't have is the court vision. So you kind of got to ask yourself: Would you rather have the court vision with the scoring, or would you rather have a, a dominant defender down low versus Sabonis, who's kind of a he's okay. He's not okay. Spare me. Hold on. Demonte Sabonis is a better rebounder than Bam Adebayo. Demonte Sabonis is a a million times better passer than Bam Adebayo. Like they said, Demonte Sabonis can actually shoot the basketball outside of the paint, unlike Bam Adebayo. The only way Bam is better than Sabonis is defensively. That is it. That is it. So if you wanted to add uh, Bam's defense to the Sacramento Kings and take Demonte Sabonis' offense away, it completely changes the type of team that the Sacramento Kings are. And anyone suggesting that that would just make this team better, you're... You're predicting. You're, you're you're throwing something out and hoping that, or throwing it against the wall and hope that it sticks. Demontis Sabonis, in almost every way, is a better basketball player than Bam Adebayo is. I'm tired of this conversation. Show me when Bam can start putting up the numbers and impact when. I know he's been a part of Heat teams that have made deep runs, but Bam has not been the foundation of those teams. Defensively, excellent player. That's the only way he is better than DeMontis Sabonis. Sabonis can outscore him, can outrebound him, and can outpass. And defensively, it's not such a massive drop-off that all those other offensive attributes don't make a difference. All right, again, shout out to my guys, Nick and Pat. I love them. I appreciate them. I understand. Well, I don't really understand, but I guess I comprehend where they're coming from in a lot of what they said. And they do make some good points in, in certain areas when talking about the Sacramento Kings and DeMondis Sabonis as a whole. But again, I, it's very clear. This is from perspective of people that when they follow the Sacramento Kings, it's either when their teams are playing the Kings or when they're just looking at box scores, which again, blows my mind that you can have, a, like it's, you look at a box score to determine, or you look at numbers to determine that the Sacramento Kings are not a better basketball team with the addition of DeMar DeRozan. But then you ignore all the phenomenal numbers that DeMontis Sabonis puts up on basically a nightly basis when talking about him as a top 20 player. So, like, what is it? Is it the eye test? Or is it box score? And is it numbers? Really, the correct answer is it should be a combination of the two. However, the eye test is clearly lacking from the eyes on the Sacramento Kings. Not enough people, and this goes beyond just Locked On NBA and Nick and Pat. This is the league in general. A lot of people do not pay enough attention to the Sacramento Kings. And that is to be expected, right? The Kings kind of have to earn that. Now, everybody labeled the Sacramento Kings from two seasons ago as the league pass team of the year, right? This is the team that... You should be watching the Sacramento Kings. Watch what they're doing. They're so much fun. This is great. This is enjoyable. And they're watching it from an entertainment standpoint, number one. And then you had the NBA playoff series against the Golden State Warriors. And that was one of the highest rated opening round playoff series of all time. And many consider it to be one of the best series of those playoffs, period, because of how entertaining and fun both of those teams are. The Kings have the draw factor of being entertaining and the beam. And clearly the NBA wants to showcase Sacramento because the vast majority of their national TV games for the second year in a row are at the Golden One Center. So the NBA knows what they have in a product in the Sacramento Kings. Now the Kings also have the curiosity factor too because people want to see what does 
DeMar DeRozan bring to Sacramento? What does he add to this team? But still, what the Sacramento Kings have to do is they have to break down the cement wall of biases that the organization placed upon themselves from almost 20 years of losing and suck, right? So many teams, there are, there are teenagers that have only known the Sacramento Kings being terrible. And they have this preconceived notion of how the Kings are supposed to be. And they fundamentally will not allow themselves to view the Kings in any kind of way or accept that the Sacramento, that this Kings team is different, that things have finally turned around here in Sacramento. I expect that. So while I will continue here on this platform to obnoxiously yell at the ceiling and yell at the sky and yell at the camera and, and tell people that they're wrong when uh, talking about the Kings because they're just not watching the Sacramento Kings enough, I understand why they're not watching the Sacramento Kings enough. And again, it, it frustrates me, especially with the Demata Sabonis conversation too, because so much of what Sabonis is undermined for, I think it's a, Sabonis is kind of an, a very accurate representation of the organization as a whole. Because when Sabonis puts up these great numbers and has these great performances, dominates Anthony Davis, puts up a triple-double, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nikola Jokic. It's, okay, but Kevon Looney out-rebounded him in game whatever of the playoffs. Kevon Looney outplayed him. Because that's all they can draw from. Because it was the playoffs and they actually watched that. Now, I understand DeMontis Sabonis' playoff record from his time in Indiana and one series in Sacramento is not great. But I also understand the context of those playoff series, the teams that he was on and the situations that he was in. And he's never been on as good of a team as he is now. The Sacramento Kings this season are the best team that DeMontis Sabonis has ever played with. The best roster that DeMontis Sabonis has ever played with. And I cannot wait for the opportunity for this Kings team to showcase that in the postseason. When people will finally be paying a little bit more attention because right now, I mean, they should be paying attention. The Kings should absolutely be a team that's on everybody's radar, that people are watching very closely to start this upcoming season. They should be, and maybe they will be. But it's it's fine. It's funny because I'm kind of talking to myself here more than anything. Like, I will continue to respond to these people and tell them why I feel that they're wrong and, and provide them the context of someone who's inside the Golden One Center every game, who's watching this team every single day, who, yes, is a fan and, of course, follows this team and appreciates this team and has a connection to this team, but also recognizes that the things that these guys do that are most valuable and most, um, what makes them elite players are the things that you have to see them do game in and game out consistently. And in the case of Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox, they show up in the box score, but that's still not enough for people. If you watch, you'll see the same thing. And when you see it, don't dismiss it because two years ago in a playoff series, you saw something a little bit different. Or because your brain cannot comprehend that the Sacramento Kings are actually a really dangerous basketball team. Are they championship contenders? No, not yet. That's ultimately where they're trying to get to. So I'm not expecting anybody to start to label them and discuss them as that. But if I were to throw out, and I know this because I've done it before, if I were to throw out the 50 win number to a group of just national NBA fans, let's say I was in a voice chat on NBA 2K and there were 100 people next to me. I said, the Sacramento Kings have a chance to win 50 games this season and should be looked at as a team that can win 50 games this season and finish as a top five seed. I think a lot of them would kind of scoff and roll their eyes at it. Not because they know what the hell they're talking about, but just because they can't comprehend that or they refuse to comprehend that and allow that. But if you were to watch it, you of course would see differently. Coverage of the Kings is what it is, right? That's why you come to the Locked On Kings podcast. That's why you go to Kings, uh, the, the Kings B. That's why you go to Deuce and Mo. That's why you go to D'Lo and KC. That's why you go to Sp Sacktown Sports 1140, right? Because the Kings coverage here in Sacramento, you have a lot of different options, and it's from people with their feet on the ground who watch this team every single day. National people are coming along. Some are, some are still left behind a little bit, especially in the DeMontis Sabonis conversation. But the tune is going to change. 
the tune is going to change. And unlike two years ago, the tune won't be, look how fun the Sacramento Kings are. The tune will be, look how real the Sacramento Kings are. That's something that I feel very, very, very confident is going to happen this season. And I can't wait for it to get started. All right, I want to hear your thoughts on what Nick and Pat had to say. Again, they're good guys. They're good dudes. The Locked On NBA is a, uh, show is a great show. Go and check it out. Do not just say, oh, they they hated the, on the Kings on one episode. I'm never listening to them again. Don't do not do that. Trust me. Don't do that. It's a good show. They're good dudes. Uh, and, and Nick does a great job on Locked On Mavericks. So go and, go and check them out. They're friends. And I enjoyed their show, even if I fundamentally disagreed with a lot of it. But go and check it out. But I want to hear your thoughts on what they had to say, things you agree with, disagree with. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're watching on YouTube. Hit me up on Twitter at MattGeorgeSack. And you can email me, MattGeorgeSports at gmail.com. Until next episode, my name is Matt George. You've been listening to the Locked On Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.